This is Heath. And I'm Josh. <laughs> and this is randomness. What's going on, dude? Hey, how you doing? I'm I'm doing good. I'm I'm doing all right, man. I hadn't done a whole lot since last week. Yourself, anything? Ah, just relaxing. <laughs> relaxing. Not not a whole lot. Yeah. Well, we haven't either, but we just Hanging out, hanging out. It's too hot to do too much, but yeah, it's trying to stay cool, really. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into it real quick. We have another guest uh, this week, um, restauranteer. I made make sure I said that right. Restauranteer and playmate of the Playboy Playmate of the Month of February of two thousand and five. Amber Campisi is with us, everybody. <laughs> How you doing? Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. How you doing? I'm doing are you, well. Where are you at right now? Because I know you, you know you're kind of based out of Dallas, but you live in LA or I am in Dallas. I I mostly live in Dallas, and I well I spend four to five months out of the year at um, my dad's mostly retired, and we have a house in Grand Cayman, so I spend oh. um, four or five months out of my year there, and then otherwise I'm in Dallas or escaping the Dallas heat or bitching about the Dallas heat. One of one of the. <laughs> Right on. I, uh, I mean, it's been crazy this year. Like, it's yeah. just been so flipping hot. It's and uh, yeah, it's nuts. You like, you just don't want to go outside. You don't want to move. Sometimes you're just like, yeah. I'll just sit right here. <laughs> but since uh, when did ninety six degrees? Like, we had a like a, I don't call it a cool front come through. It's like ninety six degrees. And like, what, since when does that feel cool? You know? Yeah, yeah. it's like it's nice when it's ninety six. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. But, uh, so. Your family, the reason we brought you on is because your family is very well known in the Dallas area because of the restaurants and your dad, Porky, right? That's your dad's yes, name? Yes, that's my dad. Yeah. Is that his given name? No, his his name is Carlo. And then I guess one of our employees called him that somehow. I don't know. I don't really know the story behind it, but um, that's his nickname. <laughs> so that's what he's, he's been stuck. to you since you were born is Porky, basically? Uh, I just told him Pops, Daddy, when I want something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, boss, we're at work, and I want to be a sarcastic little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so tell tell us, like, how, how did your family, you know, get into the restaurant business and stuff? I, I don't know that whole story. Um, well, uh, so it's Campisi's Restaurants. It's Italian food. Um, my grandfather and his brother um, started it in 1946. So it's been in the same exact location since 1946 in Dallas. And, wow. Um, yeah, they just bought it as a bar to begin with, and it was called the Egyptian, um, the Egyptian Room or Egyptian La Egyptian Lounge, was the name. And they didn't have money when they first acquired it to change the sign, so they just kept it as Egyptian. And by the time they had money to add Campisi to it, everyone around town kind of knew of it as a, the Egyptian Lounge, so they left Egyptian. Uh. So that's our our main location, our original location. We have. Um, several locations now but that's the story everyone's always like why is it called the egyptian room or the egyptian that's <laughs> yeah the we, we sometimes get customers that come in really confused look at the menu thinking it's egyptian food and then get up and leave so ah, okay. i guess they, they don't use google i don't know <laughs> well that's that i was wondering because I, I was looking and it said the egyptian and i'm like that doesn't make a whole lot of sense but now that you've said that that makes perfect yeah. sense so okay. that is the story and clearing so, it up it was just a bar. And then, um, my grandfather's sister started cooking and, um, I don't know, started making pizza and I guess it was good. I don't do any of the cooking at the restaurant. Now, <laughs> the house, so I don't want to sweat in that hot kitchen. It's already hot enough outside in the Texas heat. Um, so yeah, it's just casual, um, family atmosphere, Italian food. Oh, right on. So, okay. I had, I had read that's one of Texas's first pizzerias. It, it was, yes. That's awesome. Huh. That's pretty cool. That's, awesome. That's crazy. And also, uh, oh, the only pizza that was served at the Playboy Mansion. Because Half would actually order, he would call and order frozen pizzas, and we would ship them to the mansion. And you could order a wow. pizza at the dining room table at the Playboy Mansion. Wow. When, like, a long time ago? Or once you came um, into the picture with him? This, or? Yeah, this was, um, when I when I shot my pictorial, they wanted to, well, I, I shot an, an entire pictorial um, and then the photographer throughout the shoot was, um, I think it was Arnie Freytag. Uh, he started just asking me questions, getting to know me, uh, on set. And I was telling him all about the restaurant and the history of it. 
And he was like, wait, 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 halfway through the shoot, he's like, why aren't we, why are we doing like a bedroom scene? I know it's like February Valentine's day, but why wouldn't we be doing something about your restaurant? That's super interesting. It's so you, it's what you do. So he like called half and the other um, editor and they ended up, I, I did a whole reshoot. I sent them photos of what our restaurant looks like, our logo. They made wallpaper, they made a uniform and they ended up the, which I love because then my whole pictorial was about the restaurant and I, mar I majored in marketing and PR. So I could tell my dad that I was using my degree as well. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The degree you paid so much for, I was putting it right to you. So um, it all ended up working out perfect. Nice. So yes, after, um, after I did my pictorial. So I told them that our pizzas are shaped oval and we cut them in like long rectangle pieces. So there, it's uh. not like a traditional like pizza slice. So when we were doing the photo shoot before I flew out, I said, I have to bring frozen pizzas from my restaurant because they have to look like the right shape and everything. They ended up not making it into any of the photos, but um, I brought some to the mansion and they left those. They, I left half of them there for the staff and the girls um, that were living there at the time to try them and which they ended up loving them. And then the photographer took them home and cooked them and brought them on set the next day. He loved them as well. And then half called the restaurant or had his chefs call the restaurant without even like asking me. My dad's like, do you know chefs own so they called and they want to order frozen pizzas. And I was like, uh, okay, do I get like a commission or <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Never got a bonus for putting him in a major right. magazine that's all around the world either. But <laughs> oh well. Uh, well before we get to that, I, I do want to talk about the Playboy stuff, but before we get to that, how was life like growing up in in restaurant and stuff? And like I, I you know a lot of famous people have come through there too. And just, is there people that you've seen as you were, you know, as you were growing up that came through there? Oh yeah. Like lots. We had a lot of sports people that came through. I was actually just texting with some friends. Uh, we have a dish called the Randy white raviolis and Randy white played for the Cowboys. Like I guess back right. in the 70s and he was a regular friends with my grandfather. So he came in one day and just started making his own stuff in the kitchen and he made <laughs> these this ravioli dish and it ended up making the menu and we named it after him so you can order randy white raviolis but we've oh, had all kinds of actors and all, like the restaurant's mostly decorated with all framed autograph photos or photos of them in the restaurant mostly they'll come in and eat and we ask them to send us a photo that we can hang up or take a photo oh, with cool. them and have them sign it so um yeah lots of sports people lots of actors um who else? Well, Evil Knievel? You know, I'm trying to think of random people. <laughs> you may not know this, but you're pretty famous yourself because uh, my brother works at Al uh, Steakhouse there in Dallas. His name's Forrest Green. He does. Yeah. And His so, name is what? Uh, Forrest Green. Okay. So uh, he was telling me that there's even a, f a framed photo of you on the wall of Al and that you're a, and a, did you a frequent customer. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm a very year. good customer. But the first photo that I had autographed for Albernay, um, it's one of my favorite restaurants and it's right down the street from my house. I, I love it. Absolutely love it. And I knew Al, he worked at another restaurant, just of course from the restaurant business. He worked at another restaurant when I was growing up and had to deal with us like running all through the restaurant as like terrible nightmarish kids. And um, so yeah, I gave him an autographed photo and apparently, and I get more details unfolded recently. One of his managers was telling me it disappeared is what I initially heard someone stole it off the wall and so <laughs> they wanted another one and our friend that was a columnist wrote about it in the little local newspaper society column like that it was stolen off the wall i thought maybe it was a super fan come to find out it was somebody's wife that didn't like it <laughs> <laughs> yeah and they wow. won't tell me every time i go in there i beg the one manager and i'm like give me a hint do i know the person and they oh, they're wow. saying tight lips about it but it was a <laughs> That's disgruntled funny. wife, which I don't. That's yeah. Hilarious. And the husband I don't know probably why. talked she about you a lot. Didn't... Yeah. She just didn't like her husband looking at me, I guess. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so, so grow, growing up, obviously you, um, or not, I shouldn't say obviously I was reading that you, well, you, Oh no, here we go. You went to school to, um, what is, what is the name of the Academy you went to for high school? Uh, oh, Ursuline. And so my buddy, Chris Hewton went there. And that's yes. kind of how I got around to you because I knew that he knew you. And I remembered back in the day with the Playboy thing because it was all over Dallas News and all that or whatever. And uh, I was like, okay, I'm totally going to ask her if she'll come on. 
times. But oh, Chris um, was Chris was he was my date to almost every prom, high school, whatever. He was just like my really? buddy, like a fun. I wanted a fun. I know. I I always joke with him. I'm like, poor Chris, you're one of my only guy friends that I never slept with. <laughs> <laughs> And yet I made you be my dates, all of these things. But we just had so much fun together. Um, he was actually the first person to tell me that I was in Playboy. He was. Oh, yeah? I was, in, I was in Grand Cayman with my family, and I had first tried out for the 50th anniversary search, and I made it as a finalist. And they didn't, they hadn't told me yet, but the magazine came out. They ended up paying me, and they called me right after Chris called. But Chris calls me, and he goes, hey you know, you're in Playboy magazine this month. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah. And this is before like he could text me a picture of it or any of that kind of right. stuff. I'm like, wait, what? And they don't sell Playboy on the island in Grand Cayman. So I'd have my sister smuggle an, an issue into the country so I could <laughs> see my picture. But this was the first one that told me. And it was like a bigger, a bigger photo in the section of the finalists, which was really cool. And I had no idea, but this knew so way before I did. And so what, what made you want to do that? I mean, to get into that, I'm um, sure you've been asked that a hundred thousand times. It, it wasn't even me. It was actually a customer at my restaurant, a regular, uh, a woman named Brenda. She used to come up there a few nights a week and we'd sit and have wine. Sometimes we'd go back to my house, take the party back there, have more wine. And I came in one day, I was still at SMU um, for my last year of college. And she said, Playboy is doing a 50th anniversary search and they're in Dallas. I think you should try out. It'd be a great opportunity. You'd get to travel. You'd get to meet some interesting people. Like you're so outgoing. I think you would love it. And I was like, uh, I don't know. That kind of sounds fun. So we drank a bottle of wine and then we sat in the <laughs> office at my restaurant and uh, Liquid Courage, I called and um, set up an appointment. And then not even like 10 minutes later, we're having our second bottle of wine, cheersing to the fact that I bravely committed to do a tryout. <laughs> and my dad calls and he basically says, um, the columnist that wrote about Playboy being in town was a friend of ours, also wrote the thing about Albernays. Um, and dad had contacted him or they contacted each other. I don't know. It was some kind of PR thing. Dad wanted me and I have two twin sisters. He wanted all three of us to try out as the Texas trio, he just wanted it in the newspaper to like promote our restaurant, but sure. like, have it be some like, he was being a very Chris Jenner before Chris Jenner existed. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids out. And <laughs> I was like, dad, I already, I already like, wanted to do it, blah, blah, blah. I already called. And he's like, no, you're doing it with your sisters and we're going this day. And I was like, fine. So I hung up and I was like, no, I, I already thought of this on my own. I'm going by myself. So I showed up to the tryouts a day early without my crazy family. <laughs> and then really, I filled out the paperwork and the lady's looking at me and I go, I know, I know, look, I'm supposed to be here tomorrow with my family, but that's not really my thing, but I'm just going to try out and then I'll see you tomorrow and everyone act like you don't know me. So I went back wow. the second day and they acted like they didn't know me. And my sister kind of caught on. She was like, that guy looked at me like he knew you. And I was like, I don't know him. <laughs> and we like shut the door to the pictures and we were all laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's crazy. That's pretty ballsy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I was like, we're not a package deal, like whatever. And then, um, yeah, they didn't make it. <laughs> so <laughs> your, your sisters are twins. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. And do y'all, do you look like them at all? Um, I looked like, uh, well, I actually lost one of my sisters, um, a few oh, years ago. And that's the one I look like the most. She was brunette and like taller. And then her twin Tara is um, like real, like tiny frame and blonde hair. And yet she doesn't look like she's related to us at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the milk man's kiddo. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I, you know, I lost my train of thought there. So <clears throat> you did, Let's go back to that. So you 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 got the the playmate of the year for, or playmate of the year playmate of the month in February of two thousand five. After that happened, how did your life change? Did you do, like you start getting calls to do this, that, and the other, or did it you know basically stay the same? Or what what happened? A little bit of both. Like when I I traveled a lot for promotions. Uh, I was the oldest playmate my year. I was twenty three when I posed, and most all of the girls my year were um, under twenty one. So wow. a lot of the promos are sponsored by liquor companies, casinos, and you have to be 21. So uh, I got to work a lot, a lot. Um, so I was traveling sometimes two different cities in one weekend for like months on end. Um, 
doing events. And, but then when I was home, I was back at work at the restaurant and we quickly learned that I couldn't really have a designated job at the restaurant because then customers wanted to come in and like take pictures and then right. like, staff's mm. waiting for the drinks and I'm not behind the bar. And so, yeah, I kind of had to just have like a come in and wave and smile <laughs> PR. And, take, yeah. and take pictures yeah. kind of job. Go back, in, go back in the back for a while, come back out again. Go back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then it kind of slowed down for a little bit and I could go back to working and people would come in and be like, whoa, we didn't know you really worked here. Yeah. Is it, is it, is it weird to you that like your friends and all these people have seen you nude or do you just don't care at all? No, I wish I could show you right now. I have a huge, my centerfold is actually framed in the kitchen of my home. Like it's, so <laughs> oh. comes over here and I forgot my little niece. Well, she's nine now, but when she came over, when she was about five, <laughs> she was kind of looking around my house. She'd been here before, but she's scoping things out. She's older and she goes, Annie, Ambie, do you have boys come over to your house? And I'm like, well, shit, what did she see? What, what's she looking at? <laughs> and she goes, um, I was like, sometimes. And she goes, do they go in your kitchen? And I was like, I wish they would cook for me, but mostly not. They're not giving me a <laughs> I'm like so confused. And then I was like, oh, man. And she goes, because that. And she points and she goes, you have no clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, well, I, sometimes I just don't notice. I don't know how you notice that. I don't know. But then I forget it's there and it's perfectly in the view when you open my front door so the pest control people the anyone that's fixing anything that when they initially walk in to talk to me i wonder why they're not listening to me and then i quickly <laughs> yeah and the, yeah they're staring at a little something different yeah that's right. so it definitely doesn't weird me out no no you, you just don't have any shame i have friends that are like that i just wondered if that yeah you know being like you know chris here he is you're just your really good friend and i was like does that bother you that he you know <laughs> Appar no. apparently it doesn't <laughs> no that's cool so, so I, I when i was did look around a little bit i saw that you were credited as being on um the girls next girls next door and kendra yes. and whatnot. what was your involvement with those shows um girls next door i was actually there when they filmed the pilot before it even got picked up by e and then I was on just a few episodes because I was actually in real life really good friends with um, Holly and Bridget and Kendra, the three girlfriends that were featured on the show. We were very, very close. We still are. I actually was messaging with Bridget two days ago because she was maybe uh -huh. willing to go to Grand Cayman. And um, anytime I'm in L.A. or when Holly was living in Vegas, I would have lunch with them. Um, so, yeah, I just happened to be at the mansion hanging out whenever they were filming stuff or the girls would have me travel along for some of the episodes and – Kendra and I were really good friends, um, more so than the other two girls, because we came in around the same time. She came to live as a girlfriend right when I was finishing all my pictorial and starting to go to the parties. So it was like being integrated into the Playboy world around the same time, even though she was way younger than me. Um, and we ended up staying really close. I was in her wedding and uh, yeah, so I was in her show just being her crazy friend because she, which they, picked up, they picked up her show and she ended up having a serious boyfriend, getting married and getting pregnant. And they were like, what? This is supposed to be a wild show about like life. After right. <laughs> so they yeah. had to have some, some crazy character. And she called me. <laughs> <laughs> she needed, she needed a crazy lady in there. huh? <laughs> I was like, what? I get to act like myself and get paid. Yes. Sign me up. I'll be the crazy yeah. Girl. Right. Yeah, I'm like the crazy guy in this podcast. Oh, yeah. okay. That's yeah. my role. <laughs> There's a little sarcasm in there. Uh, so uh, do you have any affiliation with Playboy now or do you do anything with them at all now or just? Um, I actually am. I am part of um, this new project we're doing in the NFT Web3 world, which I mean, I said that so good. You already know my technical yeah. difficulties I have <laughs> even in this room to do the podcast. So I don't really know what NFTs and Web3 is. I'm learning. <laughs> But um, one of the playmates, it's called Rogue Bunnies. So check us out, roguebunnies.com. Um, okay. It, it's a playmate, Victoria um, Fuller, and she was an artist. So she basically created all these NFTs. She worked with another artist and made all these NFTs of 100 Playboy Playmates. And um, so I guess we own the rights to our digital imaging because we didn't own the rights to our Playboy images, something like that. I should work on my spiel about this, but we're all going to Vegas for a big party um, on March 14th. So oh, you can nice. buy tickets to the party. They're on sale on um, roguebunnies.com. But it's fun because we're all older now and people are moms and stuff, but we still get to see each other and hang out and do events again. So that's been 
that's been pretty oh, cool. cool. We did a couple um, autograph conventions together. So it's been nice to reunite um, with all the girls. Oh, that's cool. Is I that understood you what you said. Go ahead. Go ahead, Josh. I understood oh, what you said. NFT. Oh, NFT yeah. Stuff, but... I understand it. <laughs> is, is that the first time that you've kind of talked about that on a show or, or anything? Or I was just no, going to say if it no, is. I've talked about okay. it a couple times, but I think that was right when we started the project and I had like a little list wow. on my phone and I was more organized and like... <laughs> Now I'm just like I still don't really know what it is. <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll uh, promote well, I, it on the, on the yeah for sure. We'll definitely promote it. Yeah. I was I was hoping it was you were we were gonna go first time heard here, but apparently you told somebody else. Well, so, but that's yeah. the first time I talked about our party, and it's one of our it's our first um, IRL event. Look at me with the lingo IRL IRL event <laughs> in real life. Um, it's yeah. our first event, and this is the first time I've talked about it. So um, it's in Vegas right on. on September either 14th or 15th. Um, at the Las Vegas at Westgate, Las Vegas, in like a big penthouse suite, and there's going to be music and DJ and food and drinks and I think 15 playmates. All right, you hear that, Josh? We're going to Vegas on that day. No, I'm Come on. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so to change, okay, and maybe you don't want to talk about this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Have you watched the? documentary that's on prime right now uh the behind the scenes type thing on hef and all the bs i don't know if one, what's true or what isn't the secrets I, of playboy the one that's um, yeah yeah yes i've watched I just, it. Gonna, i've watched I just, a few what, episodes yeah i've only watched a couple myself but i just wondered what your thoughts were on that if you want to talk about it no no that wasn't my experience at all i mean a lot of the girls that i from the episodes I saw were from the seventies. So that's not even my era. Like maybe things were different back then. I don't know. Okay. Because I wasn't even alive back then, but um, <laughs> that wasn't my experience at all. I had a very positive experience and okay. friends with all the that's girls good. never, like never saw drugs. Like I, I actually was disappointed that it wasn't like more hard partying. <laughs> like, like it was just kind of, uh... yeah. It wasn't like some hardcore partying, like sex everywhere, drugs everywhere. Like, wasn't like that. Like I'd seen worse living in Dallas going out like in all sure. of my 23 years yeah. at that point. <laughs> who, who is the, like the most famous person that you saw when you were there? Anybody real famous? Oh gosh. Um, I don't know. I mean, I really love, I love meeting Roberto Cavalli because he's Italian. He has a vodka company. He has a clothing company. He was, right he was fabulous. I met him in Vegas, but um, yeah, just lots of actors. And I don't know. I already met actors and athletes and all that through the restaurant so it wasn't like i was like yeah. by anyone like, yeah, not, a, like not such Owen a big deal Owen and luke wilson i'm like i see y'all in dallas all the time known you since way before playboy like right that wasn't exciting so uh, <laughs> yeah i have okay. a friend that played golf with george clooney all the time from dallas that I, like so yeah i would never got really like starstruck by anyone um, who who's the playmate from Mahaya? From Mahaya. Oh, wasn't that Anna Nicole Smith? Yeah, did you ever? Oh was... yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. What was when was she doing her her playmate she, thing? She was way before me. I mean, she was, was at a it? couple okay. parties that I was at, but um, I didn't like know her on a like personal basis at all. Yeah, I think she was like in the nineties, wasn't it? Okay. I think. I yeah. Think so. Like with like yeah. Jenny McCarthy and that era. Yeah. Then all those girls. Yeah. Um, so we will let's switch a little bit if you're okay with that. So I have to ask about the Jack Ruby thing. Yeah. So, so <laughs> did he did he really eat in y'all's restaurant but right before he went and killed Lee Harvey Oswald? He did. Jack Ruby ate at our restaurant the night before he shot Lee Harvey Oswald. He was a friend of my grandfather's. He dined at the restaurant, and uh, my grandfather also visited him in jail. Wow. He was hmm. in jail, yeah. That's crazy. And there's a rumor in our family. I don't know if it's true or not, but my grandfather's sister, one of his sisters, um, she's already passed away, but her husband supposedly has a letter that uh, Jack Ruby wrote to my grandfather when he was in prison. Somewhere wow. in a safe somewhere. So I don't know. Hmm. So that's, huh. That's family, interesting. Family rumor mill, I guess. Yeah. Huh. So and then you know, there's there's always this talk because you guys are an Italian family, of ties to the mob and all that. 
I know you're not going to say anything you shouldn't, but is I that, I mean, you'll never, get that a lot. I always say they never tell the women. So uh, I wouldn't that's know. True. But, so you wouldn't uh, know. I actually, when I was little, I got teased about it a lot. Like certain kids weren't allowed to hang out at our house. I remember I went to summer camp one year wow. and we were on the bus and people were teasing me like your family wow. in the mafia. And now I'm like, hell yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll all <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. break your well, kneecaps. <laughs> well, maybe I, but maybe I ought to shut up now. Uh, <laughs> all right. Moving along. Moving along. Uh, yeah. So I noticed just recent, uh, recently too, that, um, that you were, you were a part of this James Staley trial. How, can you talk about that at all or not? No. You can't. Okay. It's not It's not far enough. Okay. Fair enough. I had to ask to see if you could. I thought you probably couldn't. Not going. But anyway, not going. Fair enough. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so what are, you, what are you doing now as far as, I, I mean, I know you're doing still doing the restaurant and all that stuff, but is that all that you do pretty much is just restaurant stuff um, or yeah, and, much. And obviously the Playboy? Um, restaurant, the Playboy thing, like that's been fun because it's all like from home. Like we do, um, chats on like Twitter spaces and stuff like that. So we did, they had a poker tournament on Monday night. I wasn't able to go, but, um, that's fun. So, and it's in your pajamas at home and you're interacting with people. Um, so that's been, that's been cool. I get to do that when I'm home on my downtime. Like sometimes I'm like, okay, the poker tournament's really late. Like it's my bedtime. I can't sit on the computer till like <laughs> one o'clock at night chatting with all of y'all. <laughs> I guess their kids have gone to bed. The other playmates that have kids, their kids are in bed. So they want to like chit chat. And so that's been cool. And then just the restaurant on the weekends. Um, and yeah. I, when what, do you do? what do you do at the restaurant though? Are you just like, I don't know. Are you like the the GM with the, the whatever? I mean, what is, what is your role there? Um, just a little bit of everything, whatever needs to be done. If we need a hostess to fill in this last week, oh, okay. we, we were short on bar staff and we restructured our, um, the way we handle like DoorDash and Uber Eats and all that. We restructured it like to a different area of the restaurant. So they're not bothering our customers and hovering over people trying to eat. So just a little bit of everything whenever they need me to step in. And I'm usually there a couple times a week just to go in and say, Hey, and talk to people and. Right have a I, I've, glass of wine. Why not? <laughs> I've, I've lived in the Dallas area for 23 years now and I've yet to be there. I've got to come by. And well, and let me yeah. tell you why. And you're really going to hate me. I don't eat cheese. Um, <laughs> you don't eat cheese? And, and it's not because I'm allergic. It's because I don't like cheese. And people think I don't I'm like cheese. <laughs> I don't what like cheese. What kind of person are you? Like, I, I am. Is that, that is so, right I get it. I don't I get it. Something's wrong with me. Doesn't like cheese. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't eat cheese, but I will say when I go to Italian restaurants. <laughs> I mean, this is so <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> well, most people are like, "That's un-American." You know, they're like, "That is." Just like... <laughs> That's just. I mean, like, I people think I'm weird because I say I don't like chocolate, but it's not like I don't eat chocolate. I just don't really like it, but I would eat it, but. Somebody that doesn't like cheese. Oh. I don't know. I don't know if I can that, trust you now. That's funny. Our last guest didn't like chocolate. That's weird. Uh, we had a we had a be- we had a beauty queen on last week, and she didn't like chocolate. What I, th- I thought was weird. I don't hear no. that ever. So. No, I don't love it. I like like sugary, like sweet tarts, sour patch kids, gummy bears, the stuff that is just all chemicals and like no nutritional value. That kind of junk is the junk I love. <laughs> <laughs> so, but does do do y'all have like marsala and? Oh, yeah. Uh, scampi. Yeah. Okay. Well, then there we go. All a scampi, crab claws. We can do a pizza with no cheese. That I mean, a, my dad hear that? Heath? Right. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I love chicken marsala. That's like okay, we really... have chicken marsala. We have veal so marsala. I'll have, I'll have to come in. I, I will text you sometime. Me and my wife or Josh is in town, and if you're there, we'll we'll come eat. Yeah, bring we, Josh we, the party guy. I mean, he's he's gonna be dancing. <laughs> well, we need to grab a picture with you anyway. You know, that way we can boost each other here on on all of our stuff. But uh, yeah, I don't yeah. eat cheese. I can hang you on the wall. I can hang you on the wall. You can find us. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, well, that would be awesome. Um, so here at the end, we always kind of do this. What are you doing this weekend? So. I will leave you for last, Amber, since you're probably going to have something cool and ours is going to be crap. So what are you up to, Josh? Anything good? <laughs> okay, study more school. Uh, more, more school study. Yeah. How's that How's that going? You, you passing all your tests? I'm, pa- I'm passing them. I'm crushing it. 
You're crushing it. Is that, is that what they right, say right. nowadays? Yeah, that, 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 that's what the kids say. We're crushing I'm, it. I'm busting. I don't think they say that, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm busting. <laughs> well, well, I'm not doing much either. Uh, well, I oh, I lost my. Uh, I'm not doing. I shouldn't say I'm not doing anything. Uh, unfortunately, my my aunt passed away yesterday, and um, I'm probably going to a funeral. But uh, oh. my wife's birthday is tomorrow. And uh, we were probably going to be celebrating her birthday, so we'll be doing something fun too. Um, but yeah, that's not not a not nothing too too crazy. But just when your wife turns, she's going to kill me. When your wife turns forty one, you really don't go crazy. You you went we went crazy last year, so this year we're just kind of taking it easy. And she's actually got a is not feeling good right now. She's had a crazy headache all day, so she's been in bed most of the day. Poor girl. And I hope she's better tomorrow, but. Sorry, didn't bring my personal stuff in, but uh, <laughs> so we're not doing much. What are you gonna go ahead? Oh, just uh, condolences to the Winnet family uh, for y'all's oh, yeah, loss, and uh, yeah, appreciate and it. Happy birthday, Cody! So <laughs> yeah, thank you. But uh, I know Amber's got to be doing something crazy. Um, what do you well, I hope do? your wife feels better. I'm sure she has a headache because thank she's you. afraid of you. But <laughs> yeah, that's probably part of it. That, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. You nailed it. Um, and also, please tell her happy birthday. And I'm jealous because she's younger than me. So <laughs> not that going. And well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about your loss. I will also see. I have a funeral next week, and I will see Chris Hutton at that funeral because it was a friend of ours that went to school with Chris. That was very good friends with the two of us. Like our other wow. really good friend, his father passed away. Well, so, give him a hug for me. I will. I will. And I'll tell him that we, we had our little chat on here. But um, before I do that next week, I am going. It's a holiday weekend. You guys aren't doing anything. Oh, yeah. So well, I'm going to a friend's lake hot. house I go to, um, every year. So I'll be floating in the lake, drinking some beers, and riding an inner tube, and jumping off the diving board. And yeah, doing cool. a lake nice. in Texas. Yeah, right on. Wait, what lake? Lake Bridgeport. Oh, okay. I was I was hoping you say Louisville because we're off Louisville, and I would be like <laughs> giving you a text, "Come pick me up, Amber." Shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Lake Bridgeport. It's a small, like quiet, quietish lake, but um, we have a wild crew, so we liven it up over there. <laughs> hey, well, thank you so much for taking the time to come on. We really appreciate it. You were fun. Oh, you know, no, most people. Thank you guys. This was awesome. And you yeah, have to and- eat the restaurant. You have to come into the restaurant. We yeah. we will. My my wife loves Italian food, so as soon as I'm, she's gonna be like, "Hell yeah, let's go!" Extra so, cheese we, pizza. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, I'll uh, <laughs> I'll, t- I'll take I'll, it. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll definitely reach out to you. Don't you've already said it, so I'm definitely gonna be calling oh, you or texting I'm you saying, "Serious, absolutely, absolutely." We will we'll come we'll come ha- we'll come hang out with you. But again, thank you so much for coming on, and uh, maybe we'll do it again. Sometime soon, I hope. Okay, after our Vegas event, so I can tell you all the wild stories. There okay. we go. That's what, that's what we'll do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thank you so much, and thank we'll talk you to you guys. soon. All right, have a good weekend. See ya. All right, you too. Bye bye. Right on, man. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. She was very nice. I, it's, I love it when a guest is upbeat and you know all into it, whatever. And she really was. So that yeah, was fun. Certainly. And, now when when you come into town next, we got somewhere to go, somewhere new yes, to go, somewhere something definitely. cool. Go to the yeah, Egyptian she's, lounge. Yeah, or, she's she yeah. was she. Yeah, she. You know, when I started <clears throat> reaching out to her, she was immediately just said yes, and uh, you know, you know how it is. I I really have to beat on people to sometimes to come on the show and she was so nice she's like yes i will do it i love getting on podcasts and whatever but she's like i am horrible at technology so you're probably going to help me do it and sure enough we had to help her get on the dang thing but we did it <laughs> she did great <laughs> but uh yeah that was good um so yeah i wanted to just say something real quick um first of all uh please thoughts and prayers of my family we lost my aunt the other day <clears throat> i'm trying not to get emotional i appreciate everybody who's uh who's already reached out to us. We really do appreciate that. Um, it's really, really, if you're going to say any prayers or have any thoughts, uh, it's for, for her, uh, excuse me, for her, her husband and her kids and her grandkids. <clears throat> and that's the ones we need to be thinking about. So yeah, thank you definitely. guys for, for reaching out and everything. 
on an upbeat thing. Sorry to get emotional. <clears throat> Go buy some shirts, damn it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> you sell yeah, in yeah. soon. Yeah, I know I said it last uh, episode, um, the, but there is, we do have a, uh, a sale going on for 20% off with the code episode 20 in all caps. Um, and we added a few things. And hey, guys, I know when you go in there and you look at that stuff and you're going, wow, it's a little pricey for what it is. Uh, it's really not because the stuff is really quality, good stuff. Any and everybody who has bought something has texted me later and gone, wow, OK, now I understand why I'm paying $30 for a shirt because it's a really good quality shirt. It's not something that's just, you know, some crap that you get off the, the shelf right. at, at a big box store. So. And it helps us. I mean, I I, oh, yeah. I bought a, a I bought a, a big screen for myself just recently so that it helps me edit and see things better, or whatever. And every time you guys buy something, that helps us. Um, another thing I need to do, I need a shout out. I need a shout out um, to Derek Relliford. He has the Derek Relliford show and uh, on <clears throat> on podcast, and he shouted us out on his podcast today. And this won't air for a couple of weeks, so it'll be after. It's been a little while. But anyway, he shouted us out. And, man, big props to him for doing that because he is a pretty big player in the podcast world. And for him to recognize us and see us and, and say, hey, you guys are doing something right um, is a big deal for us. So, man, thank Derek <laughs> so much for doing doing that because, man, we, we, we appreciate the crap out of that, and it helps us so much. Um, so go check him out. The Derek relliford show r-e-l-e-f-o-r-d um check them out now before you go check them out let me say it's not pg um his podcast is has a lot of <laughs> language and they're a, definitely a different podcast than we are um but he also has a a, a, a podcast uh network company that we might be partnering with to help us out a little bit. So it'd be super cool. Uh, so, so yeah, yeah you thanks guys for the shout out. out. Thanks for the shout out and screw you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He was, he was a little, he, he was a little, uh, if you go check it out, his episode, I'll have to put a link. I think it's, I did put a fine. link today. Uh, you'll have to go check it out because he's, he's, he's in a funny way. Yeah. Of, very jealous of the people that we've been able to get on our show in such a short amount of time. And it's really funny that how he goes about saying that, but it's anyway. fun. But, but anyway, uh, I'm trying to think anything else. Uh, oh, we are doing a, um, randomness get together. Uh, it's going to be in Salado, Texas at, uh, what's the name of that brewery there? Um, Barrow, Burrow, Burrow brewery, Barrow, Barrow, um, Barrow. Yeah. Um, so sometime in October. Yeah, tentatively October 7th. We're looking to maybe move it to the 14th. Um so we we'll, we already put the everything out on the webs on the on the Facebook and everything. Uh, I'll put something on the website too, but that might change and we'll definitely let you guys know. I think that's it, man. Um uh, yeah. If I think Got of anything else We'll put it. We'll put it on the Facebook and Instagram. And again, thank you guys so much for listening. And we will talk to you guys soon. Thank you. We are gone.